Parvulu, who is the founder and CEO of uh, Church Hub, whose uh, um, more well-known brand is uh, Turismo E. Uh, hello, Diego. The, hello, how are you? The Thanks first for uh, question I would like to address to Diego is, uh, uh, could you explain to us what is exactly Turismo E? Why uh, is the disruption that Turismo E has created in Latin America and the tourism activity uh, industry? Yes, uh, Turismo E has developed a software for local tool suppliers in Latin America. With this software, they can manage their content stock and distribution to the different players like OTAs, transportation companies. No, we have more than 2,000 local tool suppliers in Latin America. Uh, distributing more than 8,000 tours. You know? And we have been working with some of the well-known OTAs around the world, uh, regionally and locally, you know, uh, with our content, yes. So you have capable to uh, create and maintain a really rich and deep uh, uh, inventory of uh, tours and activities in the Latin region, and you keep on incorporating new countries uh, all the time. Yes, uh, right now during this crisis, we are actually working with four new countries that we are, our team is working with, uh, with the local true suppliers in, this, in these new countries. They have the time right now because everybody knows what's happening and so they are very keen in, in using our technology. Yes, we have been curated this content uh, from uh, uh, these years. No? Uh, so we have them in different languages, no? Spanish, English, French, Portuguese. And we can connect uh, through APIs. We also uh, are connected with other APIs, no? for example, through CMS, Experience Bank. No? So we are like, uh, we have been creating the biggest inventory of the world from Latin America. No? And, uh, and we have all type of, of type of tours. No? We have private tours that are going to be uh, very popular after this crisis no? because people want to be uh, with less people. No? Uh, uh, with less travelers around, no? so we are curating this content. We are working directly with the local true suppliers to develop more, more product, no. But the good thing is that uh, they are all digitalized, no. This local true supplier is working with our platform for all their content, for all their stock, and we are the we are their partner to distribution, no. Uh, we uh, we we develop the APIs, no, to connect to this. Uh, worldwide distribution partners, no? I, I, I think that you have mentioned something which is really relevant in the post-COVID-19 environment that we are going to live. I think it's about the professionalization of the tourism and activities uh, uh, industry, not on the side of the distribution, which actually is already very well developed, especially on the BC, B2C side, but on the Mm, supplier side, I think that in the last two years, there was uh, uh, people were thinking that anybody could provide a tool, an activity, any people without any kind of infrastructure, any kind of regulation in many different destinations could be capable to offer an activity. And that activity was uh, uh, potentially uh, acquired by travelers. Obviously, nowadays, Travelers are no longer trusting on uh, these kind of value propositions coming from non-professional companies because obviously safety and uh, and and the health conditions of any activity any uh, that you can make on destination will be key and this is something that only could be guaranteed by uh, professional companies and and the second thing that I, got, I consider very relevant that you have mentioned is a, is the word local. Because uh, uh, how, how many local providers have, have you, uh, you, do you have direct relationship with, uh, with them? Uh, we have more than 2,000 local tour suppliers that are using our software in Latin America. Uh, and yes, and we have a really tough um, for, um, for them to accept to use our software. No, we don't accept every, every type of local tour supplier. We do an analysis of this company if they are if they have the regulations okay you no know, if they have a, if they are registered in the in the ministry of tourism of their country you no know, we 
we do a screening of this local truth supplier before we let them distribute in these uh, partners that we have. No? So, uh, and after post-COVID, this prof professionalization of these local truth suppliers is going to be a very important issue no? for them to develop uh, experiences, activities that are now what the new traveler is going to look. No? So we have them already in our platform. So post-COVID, we are working really hard and in very, very near with them to try to get these new products no? that they sometimes were not selling, as you say, no? because travelers pre-COVID are going to be were different than travelers post-COVID. No? Hmm. I have always said that travel is a too serious business for amateurs. <laughs> so all, all those involved in the in the travel uh, industry should be professionals and should be have the capacity to follow the regulations and uh, probably through some activity I, I, as it was the last uh, sector to join the party <laughs> was still in the in the early days and uh, everybody thought that they could be a supplier of services so certainly now I I'm sure the situation is going to change and the uh, curation that you do and the digitalization of the services is going to be, be key. Uh, together with what you have explained before, the, the, the localization of the product, because you can just rely on large providers, because in many cases you will be offering the uh, most typical and uh, limited uh, 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 tools and activities to your clients, and, and that's not the way things should be evolving. So it's a question of bringing more professional uh, uh, true suppliers on board through your technology and uh, giving the access to these local companies to millions and millions of, of potential clients through the uh, B2C players like Viator, uh, Get Your Guide, uh, Expedia, etc. So that that's, I think, would be the perfect a way for the industry to evolve. What, what's your opinion? Yes, yeah, so, so especially in emerging markets like Latin America, Asia, Africa, no local tour suppliers are uh, they need uh, tools for digitalization of their own business and for distribution, no? Because uh, this uh, world um, worldwide OTAs B two C players, you no, know, they are really big, no, and they need a lot of content. They need uh, professional partners. They need to have everything very easy so then they can sell them uh, around the world. No? So, yes, um, local tour suppliers are going to be a key player in the future of the tourism. People travel to the destinations to do the activity, to have the experience. No? And, when, uh, and I believe people are going to travel again. No? It's going to be a lot of psychological also uh, in the beginning. No? So this is it's a perfect time for these local tour suppliers to have more tools, to develop uh, more new products, to professionalize their team, you no, know, to have a, 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 so I believe that this is the perfect time to do that, uh, to be prepared, you no, know, and especially in emerging markets like Latin America and through Turismo E, uh, you can if you're a distribution partner, you can have this curated content very easy, a lot of them and. Uh, ready to sell when people start traveling again, no? Uh, do you think that the, in the post-COVID world, we will be uh, taking advantage of this opportunity of rethinking many, many things that we were doing wrongly? And uh, these local providers will begin to focus more on quality than on volume, which means developing better product with higher prices instead of offering low price low quality uh, options i believe that these local tool suppliers there they have an advantage no uh, first the domestic travel industry is going to be the first one that starts moving no so uh, the, uh, local tool suppliers have the opportunity to distribute their activities their experiences to this local traveler no uh, and then they can start develop these new products for the international travelers, no? Uh, and in sometimes, yes, international travelers are gonna be keen to pay a little bit more, no? For if they have uh, some type of health insurance, some type of uh, 
new things that go, are going to merge for these tools and activity products that we are working with the local tool suppliers to know uh, what these new things are going to be because right now everybody's talking but there is not a 100 percent sure what is going to happen no because right right now we are leaving it no so uh, but yes, I, I, I continue with my line that I believe this is a perfect mon moment for these local tool suppliers to professionalize themselves, to use new tools and for distribution partners, to try new uh, supply partners, to try new connections, no? because there is time right now. No? Uh, I didn't mention, but I think it's clear uh, after listening to Diego and his deep knowledge of Latin America, that he is not based in Europe. He's based in, in, in Peru, in Lima. Uh, he has, uh, the company has offices in, in Colombia and what, in quite a few countries of the uh, region. So he travels quite, quite a lot. So, and on the other hand, yeah, uh, Diego, before he's in becoming an entrepreneur, was also working for large uh, multinational companies like Groupon. And so he, he knows both sides of the story. So he, he understands that how the business uh, evolved from a large corporation and uh, that gives him the advantage of understanding from the perspective of a startup how he could accommodate to uh, serve the need of large travel distributors uh, do you think it's an advantage uh, 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 when you design your strategy that's very important Javier, what you're talking no uh, innovation to corporations no sometimes uh, need to come uh, from outside, no? from startups that are like uh, focusing in one problem, trying to solve one problem in one, uh, in one region, in one country. No? And we have seen that in other industries, like for example, in fintechs that are happening, no? corporations uh, getting more uh, in hand with startups. And I believe in the travel industry, it has to go that way and it's going that way in some cases. No? Uh, I believe that, uh, for corporations that want to distribute uh, content from Latin America uh, with real-time availability, a lot of content curated. Uh, with Turismo E, you can have a partner to distribute that kind of content. No, We can develop uh, uh, contents de depending on your customers, No, and we work directly with local tour suppliers for technology, and we can connect these local tour suppliers to, to these partners. No. So I know that Latin America also is a, uh, it's not one of the main markets for uh, international travelers. No, so there is a lot of opportunity in domestic travel in Latin America, regional travel, uh, but also uh, 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 destinations like Latin America before COVID were growing a lot. No, and I believe they will start growing a lot post COVID also. Uh, in the near future, no? Uh, in the first month post-COVID, uh, maybe it's going to be domestic regional travel a lot, no? So OTAs from Latin America, uh, transportation companies from Latin America, they can have right now, when these things starts again, uh, new content very quickly, no? Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Diego, for your time. Uh, keep on doing your fantastic work at you doing in Turismo E, and be safe. Thank you, Javier, you too. Bye. Bye. Thanks.